Coming up on today's show, we size up the creepiest food in science fiction. We show you how to fake, not make, pop rocks. And we bring you some of the more interesting quotes from this year's Comic-Con. So buckle up for this episode of We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is sponsored by Gamefly.com. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we lure the future close with sweet words and then bash it on the head and drag it back to our cave. I'm joined by io9 Weekend Editor and both Siskel and Ebert of Web Comics, Lauren Davis. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks so much, Esther. We often forget just how much science goes into making food, from breeding the right kind of banana to freeze drying and Twinkies. I think my favorite science food is astronaut ice cream. It's definitely a classic. Yeah, it's a food with ambition. <laughs> my favorite synthetic food is uh, Pringles. As soon as I found out that they were only about 40% potato, I had a kind of fascination with them. I just like that they're printed out on giant cookie sheets and punched out, and they take 11 seconds to fry. I like knowing how long my food's been cooked. If this is the science we use to make snacks now, I can only imagine what's in the future. Now, I always liked the Enterprise food with the and then it just appeared, and it was a Sunday. <laughs> yes. Until I realized that, or I read, that in Japan they have synthesized meat from sewage. And the Enterprise is a self-contained starship, which means what they're eating is probably poop. And any young crushes I may have had on any member of the crew have now gone. I mean, is there any member of that crew that you could put your mouth on their mouth? Maybe Data. Data doesn't poop. You're right. You're right. Data doesn't poop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Any, like, future food that you wanted to try? I would go for just the classic, straight-up, non-fecal cloned meat. I am fascinated by any sort of food that you have to exercise before you eat it. Okay, why do you have to exercise meat in a petri dish? Well, because it's not existing in a cow or a chicken before you eat it, it just comes to you all flabby and gross, and it's sort of the government cheese of meat. <laughs> so do they, like, zap it? I think they do zap it. I think they've tried massaging it. I like think Kobe. Kobe. Nice. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll get uh, properly worked out. Non-poop food in the future. Non-poop food in the future. That sounds good. And speaking of food, we're going to help you do a little food science of your own in this week's Esther Gets Experimental. A big science food is Pop Rocks, the candy that literally explodes in your mouth. We've looked into it, and it's pretty much impossible to make them at home. It takes several tons of pressure to pump the carbon dioxide into the hardening candy to make those great explosive bubbles inside the candy. But we can fake it by making candy that fizzes sort of like an elementary school volcano. Exactly like that, actually. What we're doing is combining acid and baking soda. Usually in junior high or elementary school, you use vinegar. And today we're going to use citric acid crystals. You can find these in most upscale grocery stores. But if you don't have one in your area, you can usually find the citric acid inside those vitamin C boosting drinks that you get. Ah. <laughs> uh, we're back in elementary school. <laughs> Most hard candy is just corn syrup, sugar, and water cooked down until it forms a hard substance. We're adding the baking soda to the candy, and then we're dusting it with the citric acid crystals. When the two combine and hit your mouth and combine with saliva, they fizz. And you can go even more low tech, grind up some already made mints, mix the baking soda and the citric acid powder together, and then dust them with the combined substance, and then eat that. Now, I have two of these examples right here in the studio, and we're going to get Lauren to taste them. Over here, we have some candy that I cooked up at home on my stove, dusted with citric acid. And over here, we have Lifesavers that I smashed all up with a hammer and dusted with baking soda and citric acid. Lauren, mm -hmm. you're the guest. <laughs> Please. Lucky me. <laughs> It's safe, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Is it fizzing? Mm, definitely fizzing. It's fizzing? Mm -hmm. It's good? Mm. I made it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me give you time to enjoy that. Mm. While I get ready with the lifesavers, you go ahead, just mix that powder in there. <laughs> you go ahead and grab one of those. Fizzing? 
Definitely fishy. Pop rocks? <laughs> Not quite pop rocks, but right. definitely fishy. <laughs> if you want the bubbles of CO2, though, you're going to have to go to the professionals. Word of warning, if you make it at home, the taste is not what you'd expect. Now, speaking of expectations, it is time to thank the sponsor of this week's show. This episode of We Come From The Future is brought to you by Gamefly. Any sci-fi geek understands the importance of a healthy dose of video gaming. And so does Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service, with over 8,000 new and classic video game titles all across all consoles and handhelds. Gamefly lets you play for as long as you like. No late fees or due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Plans start at $15.95 a month, but we come from the future fans can get a 15-day free trial. Just visit Gamefly.com future and sign up. So as you may have already known, Comic-Con was this past weekend, and one of the more unusual results was this edible zombie's foot that I can smell right now. <laughs> is this really edible? It is. Lauren? Will it fizz in my mouth? You're the guest. It may. Do you want to try it? <gasps> I think I'm going to sit this one out. All right. But of course, it's one of the many things we saw at Comic-Con, including this gem of a quote from Matt Damon about his new sci-fi movie, Elysium, co-starring Jodie Foster. We had intrepid io9 senior reporter Meredith Warner ask him about his role as a refugee trying to get into the orbiting gated city known as Elysium. So my first question is, why are you bald in this movie? It was all kind of a look that Neil knew that he wanted. Uh, there was a graphic novel that he gave me at the very beginning and with the character of Max and that's how Max looked and tattoos and on his neck and really, you know, muscular bald dude. I don't know, that was his thing. Uh, the biomech weapon that you're wearing, could you describe what it does for us a little bit? It's basically just makes him a lot stronger and uh, it's like it's like an exoskeleton because he's very weak. He's been irradiated so he puts on this, they put this exoskeleton. So you, you basically control it the same way you control your hands. Um, what is your character's motivations for getting into Elysium? He's, he's going to die in five days unless he gets to Elysium. Because in Elysium they have these med bays and if you lie in them it kind of eradicates any disease that you have. So Elysium's like Canada. <laughs> Yeah, basically. He's trying to get to Canada, yeah. Everyone talks about how great Elysium is, but could you tell us how horrible Earth is? Uh, well, in, in this movie, it's basically become a third world planet. The idea is that everybody's kind of aspiring to get to Elysium. So apparently in the future, only the super rich become Canadian. Hey, if you enjoy watching We Come From The Future, show us some love. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's easy to do, just click. In fact, get your friends clicking there too. Or if you're an iTunes kind of person, you can search for us on iTunes by looking for io9. And of course, you can always find us right here at Revision 3. I'm Lauren Davis. And I'm Esther Inglis-Arkell. And we'll see you next week in the future.